Hi, I'm Nancy Frischberg, and I'm one of the organizers of the Linguistics Career Launch in the summer of 2021. And I'm really excited to uh, invite you to, or welcome you to this workshop on career exploration through the lens of self with Daniel Moglen. And Daniel got his PhD at UC Davis, University of California at Davis. And he's currently working in the School of Health there on very similar topics to the ones we're exploring here. And I'm gonna let him talk a little more about that. But Daniel, I thought in this exploration of self, you would appreciate the following story. I had a friend who, when she was a high school student, decided she needed a part-time job and she went to the office and said to the office staff, what kinds of work do we have around here? Somebody said, well, we are hiring somebody who can alphabetize. Can you alphabetize? She was like a sophomore or junior in high school. And she thought, oh my God, of course I can alphabetize, which she said to the person, but that she had to ask me as a high school student says what about my colleagues here? that they don't know how to alphabetize. So I want to say to all the people who are listening in today, that's a skill you have. You can alphabetize and it's actually valuable in getting a job. I actually have been using that little example with her as I've been coaching her about changing jobs now. She's been an elementary school teacher for many years and has some really interesting specializations, but during the pandemic realized she's got some tech skills that could be useful to other people as well. And so she's exploring how to make that transition. So without further ado, tell us what else we can do besides alphabetize, Daniel. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, and really happy to be here. And just before um, everyone hopped on, Nancy and I were talking about how two years ago, um, we organized a um, networking mixer right here in my hometown of UC Davis. And so it's been, we were just marveling at the fact that it's been two years since yep. uh, our last career event with fellow linguists. So um, I am so happy to be um, invited here today to give this presentation. It will be highly interactive. Um, I hope all of you have had the opportunity to fill out the skills, interests, and values assessments um, on Imagine PhD. We're, we will be going into breakout rooms and um, doing some deep dives on those in just a minute. Um, so I will uh, introduce myself. Um, I have a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in linguistics, um, bachelor's from Berkeley and uh, grad work from UC Davis. And in my grad work, um, I was much more on the applied side. I worked with um, international graduate students and supporting them and um, conducting research on their uh, language development. And it was through that process of working with graduate students and, and postdocs so much during my um, grad program that I really became like, so, uh, you know, just like endeared and just like really wanting to provide um, support to that population. And my first job out of uh, grad school ended up being a senior career advisor for grad students and postdocs. And I've been in this role now for about four and a half years. And I just so enjoy, yeah, I just really enjoy um, working on the forefront of, you know, making this transition from, you know, from grad school um, to, to, to the work world. And you know, I, I firmly believe that, uh, you know, UC Davis and, and, and all of our institutions train, you know, grad students to be really good researchers, but there's this huge missing gap, which is like, okay, uh, how do you make that transition from, you know, from your grad program into the work world? Um, and so, yeah, and so that's, that's what I do. That's, um, I teach a class um, on career exploration. I do one-on-one -on -one advising. Um, I do uh, programming and mentorship and things like that. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna um, start with a screen share and some slides. So the name of this talk is, um, and I will be trying to monitor the chat box, but Rachel, if something comes up in the chat box that I miss, can you just get my attention? Yeah. So career exploration through the lens of self. So I work with the approach that you and yourself are, are like the starting point to figure out what you wanna do, right? So you have all of these lived experiences 
And, you know, just reflecting on those lived experiences is going to be a wonderful place to start with asking questions like, what am I good at? What am I interested in? What do I care about? Um, you know, there's really nothing that beats a lived experience, right? We can always have informational interviews and learn from mentors and other people about their experience. And we can take that into, into consideration, but really it is, um, you know, so helpful to have lived experience to, you know, really uh, compare and see like, what, what are we truly um, interested in and where, what direction we wanna go. All right, so why are we giving this talk? So this is a 2018 um, Gallup, you know, engagement trend survey that found that, um, you know, about a third of folks are, are, are engaged in their work. That's, that's great. And, or that's okay, I guess. I mean, it would be nice to have that, you know, much higher, but, um, and then we actually see, you know, hovering between like, I don't know, 13 to even up to 20% of folks are, you know, actively disengaged in their work. And so, you know, this is just kind of like just a starting point as to like, why, why are we having this conversation? You know, I, I don't think I'm going too far out on a limb to say that uh, we are here because we want to be engaged in our work. You know, that's something that we're, that we're looking for, work that is meaningful, work that is, um, that aligns with our skills, our values, and our interests. And so just want to like start with this as, as, a, as a way of saying like, this is why all of you, I presume, are, you know, um, getting your bachelor's, your master's, your, your PhD, um, because you want to, you want to actually put into, um, put into work what you've, what you've learned. And so let's talk about that. Um, there's this, you know, very, you know, I would say rudimentary theory of career exploration, where if you have this Venn diagram of your skills, your values, your interests, and your personality, and you overlap all the circles, right in the middle will be your career. Um, I'm here to tell you that's not totally true. Um, just because if it was so formulaic and so easy, then we would not have this workshop. All I would do is say, hey, fill out this assessment. And then at the end, um, it would just like spit out what your, what your career is. So not totally the case. So let's kind of break this down a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be learning the language of skills, interests, and values. Um, when you take these assessments, some of these things will be really um, affirming, as in you may have already known this about yourself to be true. Other things might be kind of surprising or insightful, as in I did not necessarily know this, but as I'm filling out this assessment, I'm realizing this to be true to myself, or I wanna at least inquire about this. And when we look at skills, I really love Nancy's story about the alphabetizing, because when you go through the skills, I'm curious to hear your experience about this, but oftentimes what happens is that you realize that you have skills that are valuable for employers that you may not even have identified as skills. Um, you know, I, I work with PhDs and postdocs every single day. And, you know, they're so immersed in their research that um, they don't even recognize their skills as skills, right? Because they're also comparing themselves to their colleagues and their professors. And there's this whole, you know, imposter syndrome. But when I break it down with them, it's like everything that you're doing on a daily basis, these are such valuable skills and employers need these skills your job is to communicate your skill set to the employer. You cannot, you cannot expect the employer to guess, assume, or figure out what your skills are, right? So at the bare minimum, taking an assessment like this and identifying those in the five category, like these are things I'm really good at, um, one, of the, one of the effects will be you will just have language to talk about your skills, okay? And this is gonna be valuable, not only for you just to know what your skills are, but also when you're putting together your resume, right? You need to be able to talk about your skills. When you're in an interview situation, you need to be talking about your skills. And 
when you're looking at job postings, right? A job posting is essentially, here is a list of skills that we need. And you can go to your inventory of skills and saying, this, this is a list of skills I have. And the idea here is you wanna find a good, a good match, a good fit. So learning the language of skills um, is going to be valuable. And that's part of what we're doing here. And the same thing with interests and frankly, the same thing with values. And I think values, I'm gonna go ahead and just like say my bias here, values are my favorite. I love talking about values. So um, if you ever wanna talk to me about values, I would love to, love to have that conversation. These are the things of like what you care about, right? What's important to you? What matters to you? And these are things that are gonna be really important to think about as you're, as you're you know, looking into different career, um, different careers. All right. And I wanna bring in this career exploration tool of reflection, okay? So, and we will be asking some of these questions today in breakout rooms um, momentarily. But basically this tool is reflecting on what am I doing right now? What have been my lived experiences? What do I like about what I'm doing right now? What do I not like? What do I want more of? What do I want less of? What am I curious about? I really want to encourage all of you to put, put into practice a, um, a practice of inquiry, right? Using, using self-reflection. Um, this is going to be, you know, and it's, and it's almost, it's, 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 it can be a somatic experience too, right? Like, um, you know, just to give you an example, for me, I am a people person. So if, you, if, my, if I were to take on a job, where the task was for me to be um, in a room by myself, um, just on the computer all day with no human interaction, um, I get a visceral feeling of no. <laughs> like, no thank you. And some of you might love that and want that, and that's wonderful. We need all kinds of people. I know for me, um, I need human interaction, right? So when I was asked to do this workshop, I was like, yes, this fits my human interaction need. Um, I get a lot of joy from this. And so I wanna find work that is, you know, work that's meaningful for me. It involves, um, you know, high levels of, of human interaction. Cool, I'm seeing some chat. Yeah, feel free to use the chat box to talk about um, any, yeah, things, things related to the talk as well. So that's cool, awesome. All right, everyone still with me? Makes all good? So we're gonna use Imagine PhD. It's called PhD, but um, it's really an, for open for anyone. This uh, was a platform that was developed by actually um, one of my friends and colleagues at UC Davis, Teresa Dillinger, and a handful of other um, career professionals um, through my professional organization called uh, the Graduate Career Consortium. And it is, um, it is a free and, and accessible and really nicely made tool. Um, so I, I, hope, I hope that was fairly easy to access and, and navigate. Um, Imagine PhD, if you Google it, should, should come right up. All right, so let's go into the skills, interests, and values. So basically, I'm going to kind of do an overview of skills, interests, and values, and then we'll do breakout rooms um, for, for each topic, all right? All right, so skills. Um, what are you good at, right? And so these might be skills that you have gained in your academic training. They might be skills that you gained in some internship or, or employment situation. They might be skills that you've had since a really young age. You know, what, it doesn't matter necessarily when or how you acquired them, although it's nice to pay attention to that. Um, but these are things that you are good at. Now, look, I went through a grad program. I know many of you are as well. One thing that grad programs, you know, tend to do is they, um, they kind of make you feel like you're not good at anything. <laughs> so like when I work with my, you know, PhDs and postdocs and they tell me that they don't have skills, um, you know, I, I, 
I work with them, right? You all, you all have, you all have skills, right? The idea is just to identify those skills, figure out how to convey those values to the employers. Um, and, you know, Nancy and I and the whole team can really reassure you that your skills are, are valuable, right? They really are. And when I think of skills, um, you know, it's like, when I think of like my linguistic skills or something, do I compare myself to, uh, you know, all the other PhD linguists out there? Okay, then my skills are probably mediocre. But if I compare my linguistic skills to the general population, I would say, yeah, I'm, I have really high level skills, right? So it's also just who you, who you compare to. But if it's something that you've been, that you do every day or you feel comfortable with, this is, this is a skill, right? And also just remember that um, pretty much every single employment opportunity, there will be on the job training. No, like a job wants you to have a certain skill set to make sure that you can do the job. But so much of, um, you know, getting into the work world is that they want to take your skills and they, they have something that they need you to do and they're going to work with you to, you know, train and refine and grow. So um, I also want you to pay attention to skills that need improvement. Um, so for example, um, you know, we, anything that you, that you rate like a one or a two or a three, it's good to look at those and see which ones you want to improve. Um, and, you know, for me, for example, I think I usually rate like grant writing pretty low. And it's also like not something I'm really interested in. So if I'm not interested in it and I'm not that great at it, not a big deal, right? But if I'm interested in it and I need to improve it, like, I don't know, you know, computer programming or Python or something, um, then, you know, the next step would be like, all right, so let's make a plan, right? Do you want to take a, take a course, a Coursera course or some sort of like online tutorial? Like how can you, how can you then take steps to improve? Um, Rachel, I'm seeing chats, but if they're not, uh, just let me know if, if I need to address any of them. Otherwise, yes, I was, uh, looking for a spot to jump in. There's been a lot of good chatter and a couple questions about, um, choosing which skills to add, um, if they should or shouldn't add it, if everybody, if it's something they feel everybody also has, mm -hmm. that type of theme. Great question. So um, go to the job posting. If the job posting says it requires, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, high level of, you know, oral or written communication, yes, include that in your, if, if that's what you're asking, like, yeah, include that in your resume. So basically, it's not whether other people have them, it's whether the job description is, um, is asking for them. That's what you want to speak to. So, um, and if you have, you know, if, it's, if it wants you to, if a job description wants you to have um, written communication skills and you don't talk about any written communication skills on your resume because you assume everyone has that, uh, that's that that could be that could be problematic. So definitely just look at the job description for skills that you. So basically, um, for those of you who are totally new to job descriptions and resumes, these are both like skills, you know, skills documents, right? The job description is saying, these are the skills we need. The resume is saying, this is the skills I have. So really, that's, that's, that's so important to speak to the directly to the job posting. Anything else in there? I think that was the main one. Okay. Yes, that was the main one. So these are mine, you know, uh, what the Imagine PhD kind of populates your top five. Um, and then you can kind of tweak them or work around them depending on how true they feel to you. You know, but it's really interesting, right? Helping others, like it's, wow, okay, that's a skill. That's a skill. That's something that I feel like I'm good at, and that might not be a skill that everyone has, right? So, so something that might be so maybe obvious to you as like, oh, I didn't even think of that as a skill. Um, maybe it's maybe you don't think of it as a skill because it's so just ingrained in you, and you're so good at it, you know. So, um, this can be helpful to just kind of identify like these are, you know, these are some skills I have that I feel comfortable with. 
All right, and then um, interest. So the way I like to think of interest, if I were to give you a choice, what would you do? So do you wanna spend um, you know, the next whatever, eight hours or the next week um, researching articles on a particular topic? Or do you want to spend the next week designing the, um, you know, the experiment interview schedule? Um, or do you wanna spend the next week uh, recruiting participants? Um, if I give you a choice, what do you choose? This is basically how you can think of interests. And I'm here to tell you that uh, I have yet to find a, anyone with a job that has said 100% um, of the time I get to do, you know, everything that I'm interested in. So that's not, that's not the goal. Um, you know, definitely like all kinds of work will have all kinds of tasks and duties. Some you will enjoy, some you will not enjoy. Um, you know, for me, a lot of the bureaucratic um, components of working at a large institution can be like, I can do it, but it's not my favorite thing. But all of the benefits and the wonderful things about working at a public institution totally outweigh that. And so I'm happy to, you know, take, take on the, the bureaucratic things to, 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 have this, to have this work that I get to do. Um, so think about, yeah, what comes up in your interests? For me, um, working with a team, um, leading, professional network, yeah. So we'll be kind of workshopping these in just a second as well. And then the next one is values. And the way to think about values is frankly, what do you care about? Now, when you enter the work world, um, whatever job you have is really gonna shape um, so much about your, your lifestyle, right? Where you're gonna live, um, how much time you're working versus how much time you're free. Some people want really firm boundaries. Like at five o'clock, I'm not responding to any emails until the next day. Some people like more flexible hours, um, but that might mean responding to emails nights and weekends, and people want that or are okay, are okay with that. Um, all of these things about the work, right? Um, who, like, you know, some people really care that they're working for a company that has a product or a mission that they really care about, right? Um, for other people, that might not be as important or... It is important, but not the most important thing. Um, you know, I have a three-year-old son. That's gonna impact a lot of the choices I make in terms of my employment. Um, you know, I need a job that has really good benefits right now. I need a job that is secure. I don't wanna think about like, I don't, I, I, I can't work for a startup right now because I don't wanna, um, have that kind of risk of like, I don't know if I'll have a job in six months um, for, you know, um, I'm in my thirties, but you know, if I was in my twenties, maybe I would want a higher risk job knowing that there will be maybe more opportunities for growth because at UC Davis, it's really stable, but maybe not as rapid growth um, opportunities as, as, you know, a, a startup or a private company. So, so it's not just the like day-to-day -day duties, it's the whole picture of what do you care about, okay? And I just wanna say about all three of these, um, you know, skills, interests, and values, you know, some of like these can all change over time and they probably will. So do not take this assessment and think that this is the, you know, the one and only time you can take it. Um, every, whatever, every year or two, you can go back and, and change your answers and then um, update it. So, you know, these things can change, right? For me, having a family that absolutely changes, um, changes my, my values quite a bit in terms of what I need. Here are some for me. So for me, one of my top values is location. Like, um, my wife is a, a licensed therapist in the state of California. There's no way we can just up and move to Nevada or Texas because she would have to go through the whole licensing you know, um, process again. So we have to be in California and I'm from California and I love California. So I wanna be in a 
you know, a family friendly town, you know, so location, you know, and like, this is so important to me that this would be what I would call a deal breaker, right? As in, if I got a job opportunity in a different part of the country, um, I might have to say thank you, but I, I can't, I can't do it because location is so important to me and I can't move my family right now. Um, so really think about, you know, these values that you choose as, as deal breakers, right? Um, collegial, I think that just shows up as like, uh, you know, I want to work in a, you know, in a friendly, you know, friendly work environment. Um, that's really important to me. If you haven't noticed um, thematically about me, um, I am, I, I am a people person. So I really like that, that's something that's really, really important to me. Like, I want to, I want to feel like community and collegiality with my, with my coworkers. I spend, you know, just as much time with them as I do my own family, it feels like. So it's important to me and that creativity and compensation, you know, and I, and I, and I just want to normalize, you know, co compensation is important. And, you know, I, I, I really appreciate in the career spaces that talking about money is a lot less taboo because that's part of the, that's part of the equation. Um, it's, it's something that you all need to think about, you know, um, I, I'm still paying my student loans. I'm sure many of you are too. Um, and I just don't think, you know, taking a job that does not pay the bills is going to be helpful for anyone, right? So really taking that into consideration is important. All right, that's about the end of my spiel. Does anyone have any um, thoughts or questions or um, insights to share. Well, the fourth, the fourth thing was personality and the Imagine PhD does not cover um, personality on that little, yeah, on that little wheel that I, that I presented, yeah. Yep, no worries. Okay. So um, just for the uh, folks who are watching this on the recording, I will go ahead and show the questions and I'll just share real quickly how you can um, still do this activity. Ideally, this is an activity that you do in conversation. So I am a firm believer that the worst place to do career exploration is in a room by yourself in your own head. I just think that that's, that's just a really challenging place to figure something out. For me, in my experience, career exploration is an interpersonal activity. It is the conversations you have. It is, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing that. it is the conversations you have. It is expressing things that you are really interested in to another person and having them give you that feedback and be a sounding board. It's doing informational interviews. It's going to see your career advisor. That, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to normalize having these conversations because it's such an important part of the career exploration process. So, all right, for those of you who are just watching in the recording, so find a partner, two or three people um, after you do your assessment and here are some questions to consider. So look at the skills that you rated a little bit lower and which skills do you wanna improve, okay? Remember that you want to improve. There might be skills that you know, you know you're never gonna touch, not a big deal. Um, question two for skills. So just focus on skills for the first part and we'll be doing that here too. Which of your top skills did you gain in your academic training? And which of your skills do you gain outside of your academic training? So just being aware of where you're acquiring these skills. For interests. So now I want you to start looking at how your interests and your skills start um, um, converging. So which of your top skills, uh, interests correspond to your top skills? If you see some kind of convergence there, hey, that's a really good piece of information. What is something that then, then we have a self-reflection question. What is something you currently do in your academic program or internship or wherever you are in your, in your uh, uh, journey right now that does not interest you? So start doing some self-reflection here because that's gonna be really, really important. Um, I know for me, the research process, there were parts of it that I, that I, like I really liked having the outcome and figuring out the results, but there were parts about the 
um, just like the data organization that I was like, I, I'm not really, not really feeling this, right? So it's good to know, right? It's good to know your, that these, this self-reflection. And then for values. So think of your top values as deal breakers. So which, which of your values are deal breakers? As in, I will, I, I cannot accept this position unless it has this thing. And again, another reflection question, which aspect of your current role position align with your values and which do not? Mm -hmm.